to say and a big congrats to all of you who have gotten a great rank in EPG. I'm really proud of you and I would say that you are extremely lucky to enter into a specialty like general surgery. If you're planning to enter into general surgery, I consider myself extremely lucky to be a surgeon. I'm Dr. Vinay Kringen and I'm the founder of Search Test, India's largest platform for neat SS and Mortimer Green, which is India's top platform for MRCS preparation. And I'm so glad to meet you here today because I'm going to answer a very important question. Should I take MS General Surgery or DNP General Surgery? There's absolutely no dogmatic answer for this because there are multiple types of MS General Surgery seats and DNP General Surgery seats. If you broadly consider the kind of medical colleges or hospitals where you can get into surgical training, you can divide it into MS General Surgery in a government medical college, for example, VMMC, Madras Medical College, Bangalore Medical College, or MS General Surgery in a private medical college, uh, Ramachandra, Manipal, SRM, uh, uh, Chetna, a lot of the private medical colleges which you know. Then you have DNB General Surgery in corporate hospitals, Apollo, Fortis, uh, etc. DNB General Surgery in trust hospitals is associated with religious institutions or charitable institutions where a significant amount of the patients are treated free of cost or at an affordable rate like Hegdgeva Rugnalia, uh, Gangaram for example. So yes, so the factors which you should look for when choosing your general surgery training seat uh, depends on which hospital you're going to be taking and a lot of factors. So when you're looking at the factors you should look for when you're taking MS General Surgery or DNB General Surgery is the workload. Workload is often confused with toxicity and hands-on experience and that's not the case. But if you take hands-on experience, I would say a lot of people will say hands-on, no, 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 you should not use that term. Don't use the term cutting chances. Yes, don't use the term cutting chances. In fact, it offends a lot of surgeons and I genuinely feel that when someone says cutting chances, it, it sounds really awkward. But yes, hands-on experience is very important. Hands-on experience is very important because uh, it definitely does improve the surgical dexterity of the surgeon and I feel that surgical dexterity is one of the most important factors a surgeon uh, can ever have and um, so yes hands-on can be of various types it can be elective it can be emergency it can be septic load it can be laparoscopy it can be super specialty exposure and I mean elective work you're talking about breast thyroid uh, inguinal hernias ventral hernias emergency would be emergency abdominal surgeries trauma septic would be the ability to perform amputations uh, uh, debridements in the septic wards and then laparoscopy exposure which all of you understand and then there's definitely a super specialty exposure as well I'll be talking about all of them in detail as well uh, when it comes to workload, workload is the amount of time you spend in the hospital with the patients doing dressings, taking care of wards, and that cannot be confused with toxicity. Toxicity is downright abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse. You know, we all hear horror stories in general surgery, in orthopedics, in a lot of these surgical specialties, and I think that's absolutely, uh, um, you know, crazy, and you should not choose a place that is toxic. But don't confuse that with workload. Workload means you're spending a lot of time in the hospital dealing with patients. There are places where there's a good workload. You spend a lot of time in the hospital, but it is not toxic. I was lucky to be in one of those programs at Madras Medical College where I used to spend a lot of time in the hospital. I used to go back, come to the hospital early, go back home late, spend two to three days in the hospital. But my seniors used to, you know, treat me like a child. They never, they never mistreated me. They never abused me. And I would say that was very conducive to learning. And uh, that's extremely important. When it comes to the other factor, which is academics and publishing, unfortunately, in India, you will not find a hospital that has extremely good academics, good publishing experience. There are a few, but you know, you really may not be able to choose them. And many of those places don't have actually good hands-on experience. So yes, good hands-on experience uh, where your surgical dexterity is significantly improved is very important. Super specialty exposure is the other factor which you should consider while choosing your place because super specialty exposure is important because most of you will end up doing a super specialty and I do feel it's essential in the modern era. And if you're choosing a good place for super specialty exposure, you might have an idea when you're entering. Uh, whether I want to do neurosurgery, GI surgery and that perception can change significantly. In places where there is very less super specialty exposure, I genuinely find that people take only GI surgery or oncosurgery because that's the only thing they've been exposed to during their general surgery program and that is not healthy for sure. And People justify it by saying that, oh, GI surgeons earn very well, oncosurgeons earn very well. They ask me even, why did you take pediatric surgery? Why did I not choose general uh, GI surgery despite getting a seat uh, way back in 2019? I said, no, I felt pediatric surgery was more suited to my temperament and I loved working with children. But um, there, is, there are multiple misconceptions, multiple differences in perceptions. You go to a carpet hospital, you will find that the neurosurgeon is doing extremely well. The plastic surgeon is doing extremely well. So yes, I think these misconceptions will get erased only by personal experience and for that you definitely do need super specialty exposure. Choose a, choose a place with super specialty exposure. That should be one of your main criteria. Of course, uh, 
the variety of exposure and the hands-on experience is very important. Coming back again to hands-on experience, uh, as I told you, there is a difference between elective, uh, septic, emergency, laparoscopy, and super specialty uh, exposure where you get into scrub with the plastic surgeons, neurosurgeons. All of that is important. But every hospital you take, even with great hands-on experience, you will not find a place where you get everything. And I can tell you, when it comes to super specialty exposure, you will have to find opportunities to scrub into the super specialists, even if you are not actually posted over there. So my friends and I, some of them are extremely brilliant guys right now, doing very well in life. So these guys used to, you know, uh, after 9 p.m. in the night, they used to go and scrub in with the vascular guy for their vascular uh, uh, work for a fempop or something of that sort. So, you know, these are extremely dedicated guys. So there are opportunities if you're actually interested, even if you're not posted in the departments, but that's up to you. And that's up to you, you know, the amount of stamina you have to sustain because general surgery program itself can be a very um, uh, a demanding program per se. So yes, hands-on experience is very important. Uh, your surgical dexterity is definitely improved. Uh, and uh, choose places where there is ideally rotation of units because your exposure is going to be increased significantly. Because in one unit, there might be a guy who does extremely good head and neck surgeries, does breast surgeries very well. In the other unit, there might be a, a professor who does laparoscopy superb. You know, he's extremely good at doing laparoscopic inguinal hernias, hellas, cardiomyotomies, laparoscopically bariatric surgeries. So it's very important for you to have a wide exposure. And it's very important for you not to get stuck in only with only one set of surgeons because ex exposure varies with different uh, units. So I would strongly is that you choose a place where there is rotation of units uh, and there is good exposure and hands-on. So coming back to the original question, should I take MSD and MIS or DNB general surgery? So ideal is the government medical college. The fees is less for sure. I'm sure a lot of you guys are from, you know, middle class. I mean, you're not super extremely rich guys. So government medical college offers you the best of all the worlds. You get good exposure. Many of the mentors in government medical colleges are great, but that is not a rule. We see a lot of new government medical college where the load is low, where the mentorship is poor, uh, the, where the facilities for laparoscopy and any new equipment is very less. I have known hospitals where there is no working bipolar cautery equipment as well. So before you fill up the choices, you should make inquiries about these things when it comes to the government medical colleges as well. Private medical colleges, MS General Surgery should be the last in your list because many of them are actually money minting machines. Not all of them, there are some excellent med uh, private medical colleges but yes many of them are money minting machines where your hands-on exposure is very less uh, where uh, your mentors are not actually that great and uh, I would say uh, keep that as a last choice unless you're getting into some top-notch place like KMC Manipal. Uh, Trust Hospitals DNB is an excellent choice my brother did it in Gangaram and he had excellent laparoscopy exposure so it, exposure does vary for example in Madras Medical College where I did I had a lot of emergency and elective work abdominal work but I had very less laparoscopy exposure it has changed right now but that was the case at that point of time and um, he for uh, on the other hand had less emergency abdominal exposure but had, had tremendous laparoscopy exposure he had performed hundreds of laparoscopic cholecystectomies during residency itself so that was uh, tremendous and it definitely helped him it improved his laparoscopic dexterity for sure uh, so yeah so you know you should for me i would say choose a government medical college a trust hospital dnb and then would come your private medical colleges corporate hospitals are again uh, very debatable there are a few good corporate medical college dnbs but in your primary and many of them are great for super specialty level but at the primary general surgery level i would say uh, be a little wary again there is no rule but uh, i mean many of them you get to see a lot of cases but you hardly get to operate unless you are in hospital where they do charity cases as well so unless you are in such an institute i would say uh, be wary of the corporate hospital surgery dnbs so i hope that answers all your queries mm. I'm sure you're going to have a lot of queries after seeing this video, much more than what you started off with. But uh, I would be extremely glad to help you with all these queries. So just do post the queries in the comments below and uh, I'll be very willing to assist you with them. And um, just to tell you again, uh, SearchTest is India's largest platform for neat SS and surgical super specialty preparation. And Mortimer Green is India's top platform, which uh, I run with Dr. Rohan Kandilwal. Um, so, uh, Please do subscribe to our search to Sand Mortimer Green channels as well. All the very best.